and I was reading um, one of Swami Radha's talks today about, um, it was called loneliness, and uh, I mean she spoke for a few minutes about loneliness, but really she was speaking in the whole talk about relationship and um, and then the illusions and um, ideas that we have about relationship, and she called it, uh, uh, well, that's what she called them, illusions. And she would, she would give the examples um, speaking about sharing. And she said a lot of people will speak about sharing something with each other, and yet, um, what does that really mean? And uh, her, her, one of her famous examples is about the sunset and that you're sitting somewhere looking at the sunset and thinking, oh, how beautiful it is. And I wish I had someone to look at the sunset with me. And so then she said, okay, so let's say you have someone sitting next to you and they're looking at the same sunset or maybe the moon, that beautiful moon that we get to watch when we're walking home. And we're both looking at the moon she said, are you really together looking at the moon? Are you really seeing the same thing? Are you, do you know what each other is thinking as you're looking at the moon? Like, what is this idea about together and sharing? How, you know, what exactly are you sharing? Anyway, in these books from, by Terence Real, I've just uh, gotten some different language for what Swami Radha is saying. And his... Um, uh, goal, so to speak, is to really um, bring people, and he works with, all, he's a psych, psychotherapist, and he works with couples a lot. And, um, but what he says in his book, and I'll read you a little quote here, is that it's not just individuals relating to each other, but it's also uh, individuals individuals relating with themselves and individuals relating with their whole community or even the whole world and how do we actually relate instead of just be on our own so I just wanted to read this one part here where he talks about um, that next step and he calls it relational empowerment relational empowerment invites the sentiment in quotations, I was weak, now I'm strong, let's be intimate. Whether it has been men retreating from their marriages to bond with one another in the woods, or individual psychotherapy, codependence recovery, or feminist support groups, so far the main focus of personal growth has been just that, personal. I believe that bringing our growth, our personal growth, back into our relationships is the necessary next step not just for individuals, but also for the various empowerment movements or for mainstream culture as well. And when we're um, in a community as we are here at the ashram, that's one of the main things we have to learn is how to communicate with each other and how to relate. And we have opportunities every single day And what he um, says at the very last page, or the very last chapter of the book, is, is how after, and he's talking about couples, but he was saying that anyone who learns how to, first of all, be strong in themselves, then be strong enough and open enough to relate, that they need um, to have the support of a community, and an, and I thought, wow, that's so amazing. We have the support of this community to do just that, to actually uh, relate with each other. And I know that um, when I first came here for the 10 days, I was so amazed when I left because I realized I knew these people in my 10-day course, like, intimately, or I knew, like, all these, like, really private things about them, and yet I didn't really know about them in ways that I would know, normally know a person socially. So we, we get to learn about each other in a, in a whole different way here. So then the other part of living here is to cultivate a relationship with the divine. And 
Swami Radha um, uses that word, the divine, because um, it helps us to uh, make a relationship. And so the divine can be any, any aspect that we feel close to. And personalizing that aspect is very helpful in cultivating a relationship. And so whatever we know from our relationships with people, and that includes our parents and our teachers and our uh, brothers and our sisters and our kids or you know, whoever we have relationship with, then that is what we will bring to the divine. And so it really bodes well to cultivate relationship with people and keep practicing so that we know we are learning how to relate to the divine. I uh, wanted to read a bit about Swami Radha talking about relating to the divine because she's always asking what does it mean to be a friend to a person and uh, when we know the answer to that question, when we go deeper and deeper with the answer to that question, then we know how to relate to the divine. So here she's talking about people that say that um, they can't connect and so that that doesn't feel too good, not connecting with the divine. So I sit and meditate, and I have trouble to get my mind still. And now I have done this one year, two years, three years, and I never even had a vision of the divine. I'm left out. I don't have the contact. If I pray, to whom do I really pray? To some big space that isn't really interested in me? You see, am I not a fool? And who, who is there really a divine entity of some kind that's indescribable? If it's nameless and formless, my goodness, I may not even start. I cannot just talk into the night sky. It doesn't create a star anywhere. Or if it was 3 o'clock in the morning in the streets and there's nobody in the streets and I'm walking along, I become aware of my single existence. From many meditations, the attempt to contact the divine you end up with a feeling of separation. Now, if you don't want to be separated in your approach to the divine, then you have to decide, and I don't know how to put this otherwise, and this is a figure of speech, you have to be caught. You have to allow yourself to be caught in the net of Radha and Krishna. And so then she goes on and describes this a little bit more and talks about how... Um, to be caught in the net of Krishna means to uh, really mean it when we say the Divine Mother prayer. And um, so when we go throughout our day and don't make a connection, it's because we forget. And if we remember the connection, then in any moment during the day, we can realize that we are not alone. I just find that a really important thing to remember is to be grateful for whatever we have. And, and in the Hidden Language book, that's Swami Radha's main direction when we're, when we're writing our reflections in Hidden Language is to value all we receive. And that can go for, for our whole day, just valuing everything we receive as a direct connection with, with that divine part of ourselves and being a good friend to whatever the divine is for us, being a good friend, which means to make the effort to relate. Okay.